Last time I made a laser diode driver circuit, but it was only on a paper, so I bought all necessary components and a few more, prepared them to be used, and now let's see if it even works. Before getting started, we will be working with lasers, so we should remember about safety. I have a fire extinguisher and protection glasses ready, in case of something catching fire or exploding. I'm almost sure that with such a low amperage, it shouldn't happen, but better to be safe than sorry. I know that I should also have laser safety glasses, but with this 5mW laser diode, it shouldn't be a problem. I just need to remember to not point it anywhere near my face. With that out of the way, let's actually see if it works. I'm going to use a breadboard, laser diode of course, voltage regulator, barrel jack to breadboard adapter, some cables, one capacitor and two 100 ohm resistors, which I'm going to connect to get 50 ohms. So first I will connect the ground from the upper and the lower line, then I will put the laser diode somewhere in here. Now the current regulator, here I will connect the capacitor like this. First power goes to a capacitor and then connect it to the ground. First pin from this side is voltage in. Connect it from capacitor to the voltage in pin like this and the middle one is voltage out i connected voltage output through resistors and now it goes also to the adjust pin and from here it goes to the anode pin on the laser diode so let's see we have here is the voltage in it goes from the power then to the voltage in pin the middle one is voltage out, which goes through two resistors and then to adjust and powers the laser diode and later from the laser diode to the ground. Now let's see if it even works. It is ready. So let's see. It works, but the shape of a laser beam is not optimal. Here we have 2.1 volts, 25 milliamps. My calculations were correct. It should at least work as intended. The only thing to do is to make it more focused. Fortunately, I have this focusing lens, disassembled from the laser meter, and putting it on the diode seems to work. When I change a distance from the diode to the lens, it gets a lot better. For now it is not really important to get a focused beam. I could put a lens on it and at the later design stage make it more precise if needed. Now that we have a working laser circuit, we could think about connecting it to Arduino. But first I need to correct something that I said in the first video. Originally, I planned to use a laser diode from an old Bosch distance meter. I've checked for continuity and concluded that it didn't work. I was wrong. When looking at the schematics of the new diode, I realized that the terminal in the middle is actually used for something. In my laser meter, the middle prong was cut, so I thought it wasn't important. But when we look closer at it, it is connected to the case, and the case was soldered to the board, more precisely to the ground plane. I tested it again, and now it shows continuity. So now I have one more diode, in case of something going wrong. Ok, so let's get back on the track. We have a laser driver circuit, but for the Arduino laser turret, there is no Arduino in a sight. In one of the previous videos, I wrote a program, which turns LED on and off with a push of a button. Now we are going to use it to control this laser diode, but since we don't power it from Arduino, we need something that will connect those two circuits. 
and this is where transistors come into play. There are two most common types of transistors, BJTs, bipolar junction transistors, which use both electrons and holes to operate, and FETs, field effect transistors, which use either electrons or holes. I'm going to use metal oxide, semiconductor, field effect transistor, or MOSFET in short, as a switch in our circuit. Standard MOSFETs have three terminals, called source, drain, and gate. MOSFETs can be either enhancement type, which are normally off, and depletion type, which are normally on. There are also two subtypes of MOSFETs, N-channel and P-channel. The difference between them is what type of semiconductor are source and drain connected to, and what kind of semiconductor is between them. Because of this, if we provide either positive voltage to N-channel MOSFET gate, or negative voltage to P-channel MOSFET gate, it will change its state and allow for current to pass through. Since we need to use a MOSFET as a switch, it would be normally in an OFF state and providing 5 volts from Arduino, so positive voltage, should turn it on. This is why we are going to use N-channel enhancement type MOSFET. Additionally, it should be logic type MOSFET, which means that it could be fully open by 5 volts input to the gate. Also, it should be placed after the laser diode, so the source would be connected to the ground. To fully open MOSFET, we need gate source voltage to be around 5 volts. So when a source is connected to the ground, VGS is equal to output voltage of Arduino. If we were to put it at the beginning of the circuit, it would require a gate voltage 5 volts higher than the voltage at the load, so Arduino wouldn't be able to turn it on. I choose IRL520. It is logic level popular and well above our needs. Now time to test if it even works with Arduino. I made a simple circuit. Power to an LED from 5V Arduino pin through a resistor. Connect MOSFET after the LED. Connect LED pin 13 to the MOSFET's gate terminal. Upload Blink program to Arduino and start it. It works. But when I pull the wire from the LED pin, it doesn't turn off until I ground the wire. To mitigate it, we need a pull-down resistor, connected from a gate terminal to the ground. And now it turns off without a problem. It is a good practice to put a current limiting resistor in series with Arduino, to protect the microcontroller in case of a failure. So now let's connect the push-button circuit to Arduino. Upload the program, put our MOSFET after the laser diode, Add a 10K pull-down resistor. Connect Arduino output through a 220 ohm resistor to a gate terminal. And turn it on. And it works. Pretty good. Now we have a working laser connected to an Arduino. This concludes the second phase of this project. And now we can talk about Phase 3. I did plan to incorporate servos in this phase, but I think that it would be better to first add a controller support. So in the next video I'm going to add Bluetooth support to Arduino. I'm thinking about ESP32 microcontroller as dedicated wireless device, but it is a topic for another entry in the Laser to Red series. Subscribe leave a like and comment down below. If you want to follow along, I've put all links to components in the description as Amazon affiliate links. Just remember that some parameters may be different, so adjust the rest of your components accordingly. See you in the next one.